So hello everyone and welcome to our series of conversations with corporate leaders discussing how uh, their businesses, their organizations are being uh, affected, how they're adapting to the market changes coming out of the, the, the ongoing concerns about climate change. I'm joined today by Kurt Montero and uh, Bertha Lai of Smith and Anderson. Uh, Smith and Anderson has been responsible for some of the most interesting and energy efficient and we think important uh, projects that we've been involved with over the past uh, decade. And I, I really welcome this opportunity to look behind the curtain with, uh, with Bertha and Kurt at how some of these projects came into being uh, and what's going on in their world, what's going on in their, their markets and their organizations. So welcome Bertha and, uh, and Kurt. Uh, let's get started with, uh, with a look at your markets. Oh. Well, thanks Ian. Um, when I first started at Smith & Anderson as a co-op student in 1998, um, you know, I've seen a lot of changes since then. Primarily, hospitals focus on patient care, and some hospitals look at energy efficiency to free up dollars to carry out additional patient care. The focus was always on comfort. Uh, now the C-suite is looking at their responsibility to be community leaders and to lead the charge for sustainability and climate change. Uh, for example, Humber River Hospital made a commitment to being lean, green, and digital a long time ago. And the focus uh, for us was helping them implement the green aspect of their vision. You know, now the carbon taxes, they're with the carbon taxes, they're financial incentives to make those decisions with respect to decarbonizing their buildings and still support patient care. Yeah, so I joined SNA mid-career, um, but I've been in the healthcare industry for, for many years. And uh, we agree that the changes are not confined just to the past decade, but we have certainly seen them escalated within the last five years. From my perspective, I do a lot of master planning with hospitals, and we're seeing a lot more focus on sustainability. Um, the Ministry of Health is asking questions um, to the healthcare facility about what has been included in the in sustainability design, and we are bringing options to the table for clients to look at that will help them move towards net zero carbon or be the most net zero ready in the future. So the sense I get from both of you is that the market is at least starting to get it. And, and, and on a fairly broad base, not just with the clients who are talking to you, but as you say, the, the governments, the whole world is kind of shifting in that direction. I, I'm really interested in how is Smith & Anderson uh, adjusting to that? How, how, how are you taking the services that you've traditionally provided? How are they evolving in response to uh, what sounds like quite different and evolving client demands? So when we're designing projects, even if a client doesn't ask, you know, we look for energy efficient designs that were practical and rational meet the project requirements. Now, what we find is that decarbonization isn't that simple because it's moving away from conventional fossil fuel sources. It requires more education with clients for why we want to look at different technologies that they, they probably don't have in their facilities right now uh, to help them. In existing buildings, it's far more challenging because you have to lay out a long-term plan to decarbonize the building over the long term, but also to make sure that it operates efficiently in the short term and the projects stay within budget in the short term. There's a lot more education that's required now and facilities maintenance staff need to be trained in the new technology. That's where client, that's why clients are hesitant and cautious and rightly so, but many of them have stepped up and recognized that change is inevitable. What advice would you respectfully throw out there for their consideration around how to position themselves around managing the changes that have already happened and, and how do you adapt to that, but also positioning now for the changes yet to come? Okay, let's, uh, Bertha, let's start with you with that, if I could. <clears throat> yes. Um, so information sharing is, I think, the most important um, to move towards this change in the industry. And at Smith Anderson, we do a lot of that. We we are always collaborating and mentoring our staff about um, what's new in sustainable design and what has been uh, in, implemented on projects that were successful. And um, really, this is an industry-wide issue. 
So we're looking to collaborate. We're not looking to solve the, the issue on our own. So it's we, we need to educate ourselves, educate our staffs and our clients so that we can all move towards this um, new carbon neutral um, objective. And, and Kurt, last word to you. I said, let's be clear, right? Canadians have come to recognize that the climate crisis is something we have to address. And Canada has elected officials uh, to respond to this. Uh, ASHRAE has made climate crisis a focus across all their standards. Um, a bigger challenge is to get all our buildings carbon neutral by 2050. And understand how to achieve that goal is truly the biggest challenge our industry faces. You know, it's a community effort. Uh, currently, I'm the president of the Toronto ASHRAE, and you know, one of my initiatives this year is to educate our community on how to decarbonize and teach the C-suite and and the facility staff how we get there and and, and get them motivated. You know, retrofitting buildings, getting them ready, understanding what's commercially viable solution now, what the financial incentives are, understanding uh, where our clients want to be industry leaders and where they need more proven solutions, right? So we start with training our staff. We keep this in mind when we interview co-op students and we bring them through the organization. Uh, as a citizen, I always feel that I can punch above my weight decarbonate, decarbonizing the economy because I can do a lot more in my job than I can do in my personal life. Uh, you know, the first geothermal project, the mechanical contractors who, uh, you know, who had built many condos across the city could not understand how to run a ground source system. And, you know, the contractor was telling me, you need a boiler. I will always remember that insistence that he had, you'd need a boiler, you can't run geothermal heat pumps on their own. Uh, and, you know, so the education of a community is so important uh, for us to be able to get there. Uh, they could not understand the different way that we have to approach heating our buildings now. And so we can design buildings that are sustainable, but if the operators don't get it and the contractors don't get it, uh, then we'll never get there. So owners have to understand their role in this as well. Um, and so, you know, we have seen facilities understanding this and coming around to it. And so every role has an impact and what you do matters and it, and it can have a huge impact in the long run. I love that thought of punching above your weight, a, a, the sense that we all need to punch a little above our weight to, uh, to collectively address the challenges we have coming ahead. Uh, once again, thanks to both of you for sharing your thoughts and your, uh, and your ideas. Uh, we look forward to uh, continuing the conversations and continuing the journey with, uh, with Smith and Anderson. And for everybody else on the, uh, the audience, uh, stay tuned. Um, uh, there'll be a, a number of these kinds of conversation, conversations from different areas of the industry that we'll be uh, bringing to you over a while. And uh, we love them because we always learn far more than we, uh, we ever put into them. So have a great day and let's continue the uh, carbon response, the, uh, the low carbon response together. Thank you.